Opal Beaters, it's Gina from OrchidandOpal.com and I'm back with another tutorial today. So these bracelets I actually made back in the summer and I remember sharing them on a previous finished jewelry update and they're called the Butterfly Super Duo bracelets and it's not a design I came up with or anything. I've actually seen these on several different sources online so it's a pretty common Super Duo pattern. However, I thought that I would go ahead and do a tutorial for it on my channel. Every month I partner with bbcraft.com which a lot of you may already know and I do about one tutorial a month for them using a product that they have sent me. So as you can see, I have this really nice container here of four different colors of size 80 glass seed beads. That's one of the products that I received this month and I decided it would be a great opportunity to use those seed beads and show you guys how to make these really nice butterfly stitch super duo bracelets. So here's the bracelet we're gonna make today in different colors and I'm going to be using wire guardians in the production of this bracelet which is something I haven't seen other people do online or in any other tutorials but I love these things I've talked about them a lot so I'm not going to go into too much detail I will leave product links down below my video as I always do I like to leave a lot of information down there as far as links and other info so if you are curious on where to purchase these or any other materials that you'll see here today definitely check down below and you can find some more of that information so the materials you're going to need today in order to make about a seven inch bracelet are the following you're going to want to have about two colors of super duo beads these are two whole beads right here they're check glass and I like to get my super duos quite often on EurekaCrystalBeads.com, who I'm not affiliated with whatsoever. I just find that they have really good prices for the amount of quantity that you get, and they have free shipping over $35. So I'll leave a link to their site down below as well. So pick out two colors. If you wanted to, you could just do one, and you wouldn't have this little crisscross pattern going on. But you will need to have 224 Super Duo beads. That translates to a total of 15 grams of Super Duos, so about 7.5 grams per color. I did count all those out for you guys. You will also need size 80 seed beads, like you see here, and you will need about 95 of those, which translates to about 2.5 grams. You'll also want to have wire guardians if you want to follow the same process that I'm doing here. Otherwise, you'll just be making some loops out of seed beads, which I won't be showing you today, but if you are an experienced beater, you'll probably understand how to do that. You'll also want to have a clasp. I have a magnetic clasp with three loops on each side. It's a slide clasp like that. You'll also want to have jump rings some jewelry pliers, some scissors, a beading needle, and then my standby beading thread, which is the Fireline 6 pound. This is in the color Smoke, which is the darker color. I also use the color Crystal. It does come in different size spools from 50 yards up to 300 yards. And again, I'll leave the product link for that down below. Also note that mine does not say beading thread because it is actually a fishing line, but it is super strong and works very well for bead weaving projects. So let's go ahead and get started. You're gonna want to thread your needle with about eight to 10 feet of your beading thread of choice in order to make a seven inch bracelet. And again, if you do wanna make a longer bracelet, you can always add on jump rings to your ends of your bracelet to make that section longer, or you can do extra rows of beads. So just keep that in mind as well. The length of the actual beaded portion of my bracelet that we'll be doing today is about six inches, and then it allows for about one inch for the clasp and other findings. All right, everybody, I've got my needle threaded. Hopefully you have yours threaded too, and you are ready to go. By the way, bbcraft.com, who is the one who supplied these 80 seed beads, they are an online bead and jewelry making craft like store. They've got all kinds of things. And if you are an avid online shopper like I am, definitely check them out for some of your bead and jewelry making needs. All right, so that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started on our bracelet. So the first sequence that we're gonna be stringing on is gonna go like this. And it doesn't matter which hole or anything like that at this point, just pick up one, I'm gonna refer to these as dark and light, my two different colors. Pick up a dark, a light, then 
string on one end of your wire guardian, just like that. Pull these down and leave about a six inch tail that you're gonna weave in later. I'm not gonna add a stop bead or anything like that. I'm just gonna leave about six inches. So we have something that looks like this. We're coming out of one side of our wire guardian. Now just go through the other side of your wire guardian, holding the beads with your thumb and your forefinger just like that, and pulling until your thread is nicely nestled in the loop of the wire guardian. Now continuing on, you're gonna be picking up a light, a dark, and one more wire guardian. So go through the one end of another wire guardian just like that and just pull that down. Okay, so you should have something that kind of looks like this. Now go through the other end of your wire guardian. Just kind of holding everything together as best you can. And this is really the uh, most difficult part, I think, is just getting started and just getting everything lined up. Don't worry if you have to start over if you are a newer beater or newer to bead weaving and not used to working with the two hole beads. Definitely normal to have to practice this a few times before you really start to understand it. So we've got this se sequence on right now. Let's continue on by adding on another dark another light, and one more of our wire guardians that is going to be our last wire guardian on this side. I just set the other side of my string down so I could get all these pulled down here. And this is what we have. Once again, I am coming out of this side of this third wire guardian. I'm gonna loop around going through the other side just holding those beads as best I can on my forefinger there because we just want them to kind of stay in a nice little line and not fall off. And then the final sequence of beads on this row is going to be a light and a dark. So go ahead and pick those up and then pull those down to meet your other beads. Just like that and this is what you should have. I'm just gonna turn these beads in the direction we want them so that you can see the sequence nicely right there. So that is what you want. Now, my tail thread is on this side. My working thread is, of course, on this side. I'm right-handed. I'm going to just be looping back around through the dark super duo going through the next hole. So I'm coming out of this hole on the bottom, gonna go up through the second hole of that super duo, just like that, trying to hold it with my thumb and my forefinger and just slowly pull the thread, and it's gonna loop around that bead. And now we're going up the other direction. So we were going kind of like down this way, and then I looped around that super duo, and now we're going up the other direction. It's gonna be a little bit tough, as I said, to just get started, but not something you can't manage at all. It just might be a little bit difficult to uh, get everything together here on camera in a way that really makes sense, but I'll try my best. Okay, so we're coming up out of that purple super duo, and what we wanna do now is we wanna pick up one of our 80 seed beads, and we wanna go through the second hole of the light super duo that we get to next on that row. Okay, so that's just going to sit right in between those super duos like that. And try to pull it as tight as you can. Now you can see here we're coming to our next light super duo, and you're just gonna go straight through the second hole of that bead as well. It's always a little bit harder to manage when you get started too because your thread is quite a bit longer at this stage. Okay, so now we have this little gap. You'll notice that's where we're gonna be nestling these little 80 seed beads is when you have this little gap in between your super duos. So we're getting to this little gap again. We picked up an 80 and we're just gonna go through that second hole of the dark super duo that we get to next. 
just like that. So you have something that looks like this and you're coming out of here. Now we're just going to go straight up through that next dark super duo and pull. It's starting to pull everything together. Now we're getting to a point where we have a little gap again where we want to nestle in another 8 -0. So pick up an 8 -0, go through the second hole on the next light super duo that you get to and then proceed on to go straight through the second hole of the next light super duo because those are just gonna meet right up together like that and then finally you have this one dark super duo left that you want to connect and it's creating that little gap in there where you want to nestle one more 80 seed bead. So coming out of that light colored super duo on the right side, you want to go through the second hole of that last dark super duo as well. And pull. Okay. So this is the sequence that you should have right now. As you can see, we've got two rows completed. We started by going down this row. We looped around this dark purple seed bead. And then we just started kind of putting things together by nestling these four 8-0s in between where the super duos were gapping apart. Now we're ready to go back down the other direction and to do that, we're going to string on a dark super duo. Just go ahead and pull that down to meet your row and go down through the 80 seed bead that you get to next. And you see it kind of just sets that next purple one right on the top there. And that's what you want. All right. So with this stitch being the butterfly stitch, you see how we have these little clusters and just think of each one of these little clusters like the four here as butterflies. You have your wings on this side and your wings on this side and the four of them make up a little butterfly. So when you are looking at your row right here, which is where we're ready to string on our next beads, we have two light colored super duos right here and we want to complete our butterfly. So we're going to pick up two more light super duos and go through that 80 seed bead that we get to next. That's going to pop those right into place to complete our first butterfly. Now we have two dark super duos there. We want to pick up two dark super duos again and pop those into place next to the two dark ones on that side by going through that 80 seed bead that we get to next, pulling our thread gently, just making sure everything doesn't get twisted or anything like that, and pulling tightly so that it's nestled right in there. So we've got one more full butterfly to complete, and we're going to do that by picking up two of our light colored super duos. And you guessed it, we're going to go down through that next 8 0 that we get to. Just like that. So we've got this nice little pattern starting to form. We need to pop in another dark super duo here at the bottom. So let's go ahead, string one of those on. And go ahead and pull that down. And now in order to get this situated right, you strung it on, you're coming out of the left hand side hole right here. You're going to swing your thread around and go back up because you want to go up in the other direction now to complete the next row. And while you're doing that, go ahead and go through the next light colored super duo. Of course, the hole on the right, the second hole. So go ahead and do that. 
holding your work with your thumb and your forefinger just to keep it together and then giving it a nice pull so that everything is nice and tight. So that is what you should have so far and now we're ready to pop in some 80 seed beads here, here, and here where we have our little gap that's formed. So pick up an 80 and go through the light and the dark and it's going to pop your 80 right into there. Just like that, go ahead and pick up another 80. Go through the light or the dark and then the light, I'm sorry. So those next two right there to pop your 80 into place. Just like that. Pick up another one. And then finally go through your light and your dark that's remaining. So some of these rows are going to have four 80 seed beads and some of them are going to have three as you can see here. Now we're going to be heading down in this direction and to start our next row we want to have the opposite color butterflies if you will sitting next to each other. So here we have a clear butterfly next to it is going to be a dark purple. Here at the top we have two dark purples we know that our next two beads at the top are going to be clear. So we want to go ahead and make sure we're picking up the correct color to start our next row. And that is going to mean that we want to pick up a clear or a light first and then a dark. Put those on your needle and then head down through that 80 seed bead that's sticking out and pull and you can see that it puts those two beads right into place. We're coming out of this 80 and we want the opposite of this bead here. So we're gonna, instead of picking up a light and a dark to be the same next to each other, we're gonna go ahead and pick up a dark and then a light to start our new butterflies. And then go through the 80 that is sticking out like that. Now we want to pick up a light and a dark, go through the next 80 that's sticking out, and pull, pop those into place just like that. And once again, pick up a dark and a light, and just go ahead and pull those down. Like that. And just kind of hold them into place in order to go around the other direction you're going to want to just go up through that super duo on the very bottom that you just added that light one okay show you a little close-up we looped around and we just went back up through the second hole in that light super duo. Now you can kind of see that we have a little gap forming in between these two beads. That's where we want to pop in an 80. So pick one of those up and go through now the two dark colored super duos. Go ahead and hold that with your thumb and your forefinger and pull it nice and tight. And there you have it. Now we can see this Next little gap right here that's formed, pick up another 80 and go straight up through the two light super duos that you get to next. There you go. Pick up an 80, go through these two dark super duos. just like that and we want to put on one more 80. I'm going through the light color all the way at the top and pulling it nice and tight. So you can see that we've got that row done now we're gonna head down in the other direction and we want to complete our butterflies on this side so we want to go ahead and pick up another light 
So we have that on our needle and then just go ahead and go down through that 8O that is at the top that we just added. Just like that. To complete our butterfly wings on this side, go ahead and pick up two darks. And go through the 8O that you get to next. Pop them into place. We want to now pick up two lights. Go through the 8 that is next. Pick up two darks. Go through this last 8 right here. And so those butterfly wings are completed and you just want to add a clear down here at the bottom to sit next to the other clear or light rather. So I'm just pulling that down into place. We're coming down through that one hole, swinging my needle up and around to head back in the next direction. And I'm just gonna go through the other hole of that light and then going ahead through that second hole of the dark that we get to next. and pulling nice and tight. So if you need to, go ahead and rewind the video and you can just follow the exact same sequence that we've been following. As you can see, this opened up some more little gaps here. We've got gap, gap, gap. That is where you'll be adding in your next eight O's to fill those spaces. Go ahead and make about six inches worth of the beaded portion. For me, that seemed to be about 28 rows of super duos and we will meet back and go ahead and add on our wire guardians to the other side and go ahead and add on our clasp and finish our bracelet. All right everyone hope your bracelet is going really really well so I have my 28 rows all stitched up and I'm at the point where I am ready to put on the wire guardians on the other side so as you can see here I have ended my bracelet on the row where we're going to pop a wire guardian here, here, and here, which is going to match up with our other side. So I'm going to go ahead and string one on, on one side, and pull it down, and it's just going to pop right into place there. Then I'm going to go through the other side of the wire guardian, and then through these two super duos. And we're just going to pull slowly to make sure that this doesn't get twisted and to also make sure that the thread settles right in place on that wire guardian, right in that little channel. And you can see we're coming out of the light super duo right here. We're going to go ahead and pick up our next wire guardian. Go ahead and pull that down and kind of get it into place just like that and then put your needle through the other side going down there and then go through the next two super duos just like that and just like we did before go ahead and pull it slowly just making sure that the thread nestles right into place just like that and now we're ready to pick up our final wire guardian. So let's pick that up, go through one of the loops, and pull it down. There we go. And go through the loop on the other side, and the next two super duos. Gently pull it, making sure nothing's twisted, and everything sets into place. just like that. So you can see we've got our three wire guardians in place here. And what we wanna do now is we want to tie off our thread. I still have my tail thread on this side, so if you do as well, you're just gonna follow the exact same procedure to go ahead and tie some knots and weave your tail thread back through 
There's really no right or wrong way to do it except that I do suggest making at least three half hitch knots as you're going through to secure your piece. So I'm coming up out of this super dough here. I'm just going to go back down and kind of follow the thread path. And I'm going to go down through the super duo and down through that size 80 bead right there. And I'm going to make my first little knot right in between those beads right there. So I'm just sticking my needle kind of underneath that thread and I'm making a little loop. And then I'm just going to go through the loop with my needle. and pull. So that made my first little half hitch knot. And again, just going to keep following the thread path and going through this 8 as well. I think I'm going to go underneath that one and make a little knot there. Continuing on. And you can do this as much as you'd like, however you feel comfortable, and just see how secure your piece feels. Okay, making sure your loops don't get twisted over other things. And then after you make your knots, if you've got extra thread, feel free to just go through your piece with your extra thread to make it even stronger if you want to. However, it's really not necessary. There we go. So I've gone through, I've made three half hitch knots. I'm just gonna quickly go down through this super duo and then back up through the other direction. And then we're gonna add on our jump rings and our clasp and that is all we have to do except for going and weaving in our tail thread, which I'm going to do off camera so you don't have to wait on me to do that. Okay, I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to go ahead and clip off that working thread. And like I said, I'm going to weave in my tail thread real quick and we'll go ahead and add our jump rings and finish off our bracelet. All right, guys, so I have added the split or jump rings to one side of the bracelet and we'll go ahead and do the other side together. I'm using my handy little split ring pliers. I'll leave a link to these down below if you're interested on how to purchase those. And I'm basically just opening these up with this handy tool which makes it a lot easier to uh, use these split rings. And you don't have to use split rings, you can use jump rings to attach your clasp. So I'm just going to Add that on there. Got two more to go. And again, just if you need to adjust the size of your bracelet at this point, you could even put two split or jump rings together to make it a little longer, or use you know your smaller split or jump rings to make it smaller. Just you know, you can do a lot of adjusting with this portion of the bracelet as well, even if you keep the beaded portion at six inches by changing up how you attach your clasp. Okay, so we've got one more to go. And that one goes right here. Just twisting that on. And finally attaching this one to this loop right here. And there we have it. That is the end of our bracelet. I love how it came out. I really like the color combination. Hopefully you guys do too, especially with all the beautiful color combinations I'm sure that you all have come up with as well. And here's the completed bracelet on my wrist. I want to thank all of you guys for watching so much. I always enjoy having you here with me. Please feel free to leave me any kind of comment or question below that you would like to. I want to thank bbcraft.com for supplying me these 8 seed beads. As you can see, I have 
not even hardly made a dent in this nice container. I'll leave a link to these down below as well. I hope you all join me again soon for more finished jewelry updates, more tutorials just like this one, and more subscription unboxings. Feel free to send me any pictures of your finished pieces from my tutorials to my email address or to my Facebook page. All that information is down below as well. In the meantime, I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful day, and as always, happy beading! If you enjoyed this video, I'd love you to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell if you'd like to see more of my videos. And check out the video description section to follow along on all of my social media handles and check out my new website and blog at orchidandopal.com. Thanks for watching!